Healing Hut, episode number 12, and I'm so glad you are here. I'm going to show you what I've accomplished and what I plan on accomplishing this week. Um, I think things have slowed down quite a bit for me, and the real reason is it's been cold. <laughs> I, I was prepared for cold for December, January, February, but now it's March, and yesterday we had three inches of snow, and it's really cold. And I think because of my illness, I have a, uh, a lot of uh, cold intolerance. So every morning when it's cold, it's really hard for me to discipline myself to get out and come up to the cottage, especially if it's raining, snowing, high winds. <laughs> and uh, so I think I've slowed down. Uh, I'm trying to discipline myself more. I'm going to show you a little bit. Here's some of my old wood. I've showed you this before. This is Douglas fir cut down from the trees, old growth forest. Uh, probably late 1800s is built in a barn around 1900 <clears throat> and I'm going to be using that for one project is to make uh, a frame around windows that's what you're going to see me working on today and also another job oh I'm going to show you this Douglas fir uh, here's a piece of it and if you look at it I know I'm a wood nerd but these grains are so tight the wood is so heavy it uh, it feels almost as heavy as oak. It's beautiful to work with. The problem is it does have nails in it. If you see a nail right there in that one. Um, and the wood dimensions uh, are full dimensions. So it's a full two inch by eight or two inch by six. But it's not perfect because these were cut by hand at a sawmill. One of the things I've worked on that's not on camera yet is I put metal flashings around my uh, Civil War era timbers. I still think they're just beautiful. And uh, today I'll probably put uh, tape flashing on top of that. So stone will come right up to this wall, or I mean, come right up to this beam. So that's why I'm trying to protect it from uh, moisture from the stonework. But just look at this timber here. That, those are original pegs that were in the timber, original cuts. So that was around 1860, something like that, when those trees were taken down. So what I'm going to do today, you'll see this section of the building I call the lean-to. Uh, which is over here under this uh, roof I've decided to do in wood rather than stone because stone is a lot of work and I have a collection of beautiful wood it's called Dutch lap wood that would make great siding it's it's old it's not rotten but it uh, it, uh, it, it it needs some repair I mean it's got some nails and things like that cuts in it broken pieces but I'm gonna make that into that wall so I'm going to start, I'm working on frames day, and you'll see me continue working on these frames that go around the window. And the reason for that, you want to bring the window out or up to the top surface of the, of the siding to give the right look. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Here's my old window frame for one side that's going to be surrounded by stone. <clears throat> so another thing I want to tell you about that I've worked on is that when I first... Uh, met with the concrete contractors back last April. There's always this, this I, you know, first time I've ever been a general contractor, there's this, I don't know, division of labor, who does what? So I had, I wanted to put electrical boxes into the floor of the, of the concrete building so there's not cords running everywhere. So they said, well, you gotta do that. I knew that, so I put together the conduit in the box, glued them together. And then they said, before they came out to pour the concrete, Put them where you want them to go. And you have to do a very precise measurement. I'll show you how, where one comes up. Because this comes up, if you can see it, it's dark in here. Uh, this conduit comes up right inside of a wall. So you had to lay it on the, on the, on the gravel precisely where it went. But <laughs> then the concrete guys come in and put rebar down. And you're supposed to tie this to the rebar. And they didn't do that for reasons I don't know why. So after they pour concrete, I came out here and to my horrors, my electrical boxes had disappeared beneath the concrete and it was too late. So I knew I'd eventually have to come to the time of trying to find those boxes, which is scary. You don't want to drill, drill holes all over your concrete slab. But fortunately, you could look at the surface of concrete and you could see a little dimple above those boxes. And I got the uh, jackhammer out. I found this box, got it all jackhammered out. It's got a it's tilted, it, I gotta raise it a little bit, but I think it's gonna be fine. And then the one that's gonna go in the kitchen under the island, 
it's a little bit deeper and I've got it uh, chiseled out so that was another big job so later this week in two days I'm gonna be meeting with an electrician and we're gonna plan out the electrical wiring for the building and I'm gonna spend the next few weeks putting in wiring so come along I'm going to stop and talk now and then if I need to put some things on time warp that, so this video is not too long. But again, I really appreciate you coming. Hi folks, I'm going to show you uh, one of uh, one of my latest disasters, <laughs> and, and this is the kind of thing you run into. I had cut out, I spent hours, hours, almost a whole two days of work, which is about two hours each day, cutting out the frame of old wood, and my old wood is sort of precious, I don't have endless supply, for the outside window, and then I put this perfectly clear, crystal clear varnish, or not, it's urethane, uh, coating on it inside my basement where it was warm because i ran into trouble with one of my oak beams that turned white when i did it outside and then look what happened it is it is a disaster it, these boards all turned white they were warm so that wasn't the problem and the only thing i can figure out is that the boards had too much moisture in them they had been under tarp throughout the winter but i thought they were dry so, oh, and uh, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. Uh, I have one more window of uh, frames to do, and I'm gonna put them in my sauna. It's a dry, well, it's a wet or dry. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be dry for this purpose. These are my next boards. So I'm gonna run a few cycles in the sauna to start drying them out. Then I'll probably put them. Then I'll probably just put them in the house for at least a week or two. So this is my makeshift kiln uh, for wood. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and you know, I wanna comment too, I've, uh, I've always been a builder of um, things using recycled materials as much as I can. And especially after I got sick and I was laid off from work, this sauna, you not, may not be able to tell, is built with recycled materials. There was a split rail cedar factory about 30 miles from here that had closed a long time ago. I guess they don't use split rails anymore. So they had this huge supply of old cedar split rails that I picked up and turned into a sauna. And I think it turned out very well. Uh, and I like to do recycled material for many reasons, uh, not to cause waste and also it's cheap. And one other thing while I'm down here at the house, this is a stone wall. Uh, this wall was, uh, I built around the whole house. It was part of my practice. The wall of the cottage is gonna be different. 
it's going to be what's called overgrouting. The, the, the cement lines are going to be wider, and it's a different type of stone. But I had a lot of practice. And one thing about this wall that's interesting, I'm just telling you a side story because I know I do have, I do have followers who have multiple myeloma and other cancers, is that when I was building this stone wall right here, it took me two years to do my whole base of my house. But when I was building this wall, and I'll never forget, is when I first started having symptoms of multiple myeloma. But it was very unusual symptoms. Uh, I had neurological symptoms where almost every muscle in my body started to twitch. My mouth, my cheeks, my eyes, my arms, my chest, my back, everywhere was starting to twitch. And I am a PA who's worked in neurology for my whole career, ironically, and there was only one condition that that would be consistent with, and that's ALS. And even uh, I eventually saw one of my colleagues um, after I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, and he was quite sure it was, it was ALS, but it wasn't. <laughs> no one could have that bad of luck to get uh, cancer and ALS at the same time. So I still have some of those symptoms, but it was a complete friggin' nightmare for almost two years, no sleep, uh, every muscle in your body twitching day and night. I thought I was gonna go insane. Uh, there is a condition called benign fascicular syndrome that the suicide rate, and it's people, they don't know why it happens to those people. They just start, all their muscles start twitching at once. Um, and they have a suicide rate of 50%. I can't remember, it's after one year or two years. So it, it was a complete nightmare. Uh, and thank God that uh, that has slowed down uh, quite a bit, 90% since uh, that time. And no one knows why. Uh, renal failure ha is a neurotoxin because all the chemicals that's in your bloodstream. Uh, also, myeloma itself can be a neurotoxin. And when I visited with my myeloma specialist not too long ago, she brought this up again. She said, didn't you have this fasciculations all over? And I said, oh yeah. And she said, uh, we just had a patient not too long ago had the same thing. So I think it's probably underreported. And just bathing your body in these toxins for so long, you know, I probably lived in renal failure for two or three months. I had caused the damage. Anyway, so here's the wall. I'll never forget. I'll never forget placing was each stone I remember placing. And during that time, I was starting to worry that I was having ALS. Um, so anyway, that's that story. Well, spring is in the air, I think, although it doesn't feel like it. It's a blustery March day. Uh, we're supposed to have some warmer weather coming this week, which will help me to uh, move along a little bit faster. This concludes uh, the latest episode, episode 12 of The Healing Hut. I'm going to show you a little bit of what we've done. I finished the, all the flashings around my beautiful Civil War era hand hewn beams. Uh, I've done some more tweaking on the door. You won't see it yet, but I keep working on that. Uh, I do have my frame to one window done. I've got it mounted. It needs a little bit more work to uh, even it up and putting plugs in the holes and putting some more caulk around the outside. Uh, I'll straighten all that up. Now, I'm going to show you how this is going to look. This lane two will not have stone. I'll have this, this siding called Dutch Lap. Um, that came from a gymnasium built in 1900 and I'll clean it up this this uh, the siding and maybe put a waterproof finish on it uh, but otherwise I'm going to leave it this patina of this old look that's what I'm trying to accomplish I hope that when this thing is done people will come up and assume that this building has been here for a hundred years that's my goal my chickens are not very happy this morning the goats are hidden inside the shed <laughs> well another big thing i've spent a huge amount of time on it's not caught on film is i'm doing this transition over to uh electrical i met with my consulting electrician uh two days ago and three days ago and we went over everything we mapped out the plan of how to wire this cottage and I think I have it all figured out. It's a lot of work. I got to dig some deep trenches from the cottage up to the power pole and put in underground lines. I've put uh, underground lines around the cottage back to my, where I'm going to put my uh, circuit breaker. <clears throat> and then I'm, tomorrow morning, I'm going to start pulling wires. 
I got a long hike tomorrow morning with some friends and then uh, I'll start pulling wires and for the next probably three weeks I'll be focusing on electricity. Now I would like to go out and continue doing some work on the siding just as a break. I don't just do electricity. But uh, I come into it, <laughs> I realize I have a, a pretty big problem I've got to deal with. I'll tell you about it on the next episode. But unfortunately, once again, I'm going to have to jackhammer up part of my floor um, and rework some conduit and wiring. I'll explain that next time. But I want to tell you again how grateful I am that you come to these, uh, that you watch these. Uh, it, give, it gives me uh, a, a lot of help. <laughs> feel like I have someone with me. And if you know people who are dealing with cancer or other chronic illnesses and are struggling with their lives, you know, you know, go ahead and pass this along. I'd welcome them to come uh, and join me in this endeavor. Thanks again. Uh, tonight is Oscar night. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll be nominated for, for a documentary. <laughs> of course, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> be nominated as a, uh, as a <laughs> of what, what not to do uh, when you're making videos. Anyway, you have a, a beautiful week. And uh, next week, I, or this coming week, I hope it's going to be a lot more like spring here. I'm cozy.